All right, guys, as promised, um, I'm going to kind of talk you through my incubator systems and show you how rudimentary they are and somewhat inexpensive. Uh, I've got two incubators up, and basically I have $100 in each one of them. Um, so we'll go through, I'll show you exactly what I used and let you decide whether or not you want to do that. From what I've seen so far, uh, I really like the setup, and I cannot take credit for this. This was actually a uh, idea that I got off of Garrett Hartle with Reach Out Reptiles, and decided to use this method. He said it was an old school method, and I'm all about old school because, quite frankly, I'm old. So, with that said, it uh, seems to be working really, really good. The temperatures are holding real well. The humidity, of course, is perfect. And um, let's get to it. We'll show you what it looks like and show you the products that I use for it and let you guys decide. Let me know what you think. So, these are my incubators. This is a 156 quart 223 can igloo um, or Rubbermaid or whatever it is. This is a Coleman. Uh, this one here I got from a buddy of mine and he said I could just have it. So that worked out real well. And this is actually a brand new Coleman that someone donated. And I was actually able to just go ahead and drill out a bunch of holes in a brand new cooler. So, let's open one up. This is one I just got set up. So, as you can see, on the inside you've got water. A little metal rack system. I know several of you are going to say, don't use metal, it rusts. I get that. Uh, it's just the only thing I have right now. And I will show you what that metal is for. But basically, you're looking at two aquarium heaters. And if you look... You want to make sure that it has the adjustable thermostat built in so you can adjust your temperatures and get it spot on. The temperature that's on the heater is not going to match up, so you're going to have to use a temp gun. This right here is just a water circulator or water pump. It basically just circulates all of your water throughout to make it a consistent temperature. Now, on the cooler itself, I drilled out three holes on the front. I've also got them in the side. And as you can see on this one, I did the top as well. Just basically uh, a way to get some better fresh air circulation inside. So, there is just the inside. You notice on the side here, I just cut that out for the, for the cord to go in on both sides. No big deal, just take a quarter inch drill bit, drill up close to the top, and then uh, twist it up, and it just basically pops up. So, filling the water up, make sure you get it just above your pump, and that will circulate the water. The Once you get the temperature right with Retix, it's 88 to 90 degrees. I've got this one here set up at 89, and it's right on the money. So, so far so good. Now, as far as the rack, we'll go ahead and shut this one. Open this one up. As you can see, the humidity, as guessed, would be 100%. Now, this is where the racks come in. These are just little shoe box boxes. And basically, you know, it's a lot easier when I have two hands. So, as you can see, the rack just keeps them right up off the water. Uh, keeps them from going down in the water. There's my heater with the pump. You can see that circulating. Now as far as the boxes, uh, drilled one hole on one corner right there. And then if I turn this around, you see on the opposite corner right there. Now these are just loose fitting lids. There you can see the other hole. And I use perlite, and as stated with Reach Out Reptiles, you want to get that and do a good rinse on it because it is really dusty. And that dust will actually clog up the pores in the egg and suffocate the embryo. So 
you definitely want to rinse that off and let it dry for about a week or two and just to where it's it clumps really good in the hand so there's the rack as you can see it just keeps the shoe boxes just off the water as I put it down in here close that up and as you can see we cut the side up for the cables as well there's the holes for some fresh airflow uh, don't think I got that side but in the top all right so that is two incubators that is good for probably about I'm gonna guess 60 to 70 eggs and uh, I'm excited so now we'll go out and talk about the actual products that I used okay this is basically it this is a marine land uh, maxi jet 400 you can see that it's good for a circulation of about 500 gallons per hour uh, just a small standard aquarium circulator this right here is I think $13 close to $14 on Amazon and of course if you're a prime member no shipping as far as the heaters I got the precision precision submersible heaters there is the adjustment that I was referring to on the top there again those temperatures are not precise so you'll have to use a uh, temp gun for it but as you can see uh, this is for an aquarium up to 40 gallons I believe we have probably about 10 maybe 12 gallons in the cooler so it's going to be more than efficient for that but you'll need two of them for sure as I showed you in the cooler itself and that's it guys uh, two heaters and a circulator and a cooler all this right here these right here I believe are $23 24 dollars so you know say 50 bucks say 65 and uh, of course the shoe boxes uh, all three of these were a total of 23 dollars on amazon.com so there's your hundred bucks the perlite you can pick that up at uh, lowe's i think i gave seven dollars for it one bag you want at least two inches of perlite on the shoe boxes so one bag does about two and a third so if you're doing three boxes you're going to want to buy two bags you'll have some for the next season so no big deal anyway that is the quick tutorial about a homemade do-it-yourself incubator like i said you can pick up uh, go to marketplace you know, on facebook or craigslist you can find these coolers everywhere uh, but I just asked around I had one friend give me one and I had someone else donate one so I real I have a hundred bucks in an incubator and that really beats seven to, to twelve hundred dollars for one uh, as stated it is an old-school method and if you've watched some of my older videos I'm old school, so I know that that stuff typically works really well. I'll keep you posted. I've got uh, I've got some eggs coming here in about 30 to 40 days, and uh, we'll give it a shot. We'll let you know, and we'll keep posting the videos and see what uh, what comes out of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helps, and share it to all of your reptile buddies. And let's get some subscribers get going here. Uh, hit the like button for sure. Thanks for watching. Peace out.